Hello everybody, I am going to teach bridge engineering and a part of it that is reinforced concrete road bridges. Why we have chosen this one reinforced concrete road bridges, this module is having 20 lectures of each half an hour and this is lecture number 1 where I am going to give the introduction and then summary and the reference which we are going to use that we shall give. Now let me tell you what is bridge engineering. So a bridge is a structure built to span physical obstacles without closing the way underneath such as a body of water mainly you can consider river, canal, valley or road for the purpose of providing passage over the obstacle. So that means you can say always whenever we require bridge we always require bridge on the orthogonal direction that means from one side one bridge is coming and another passage and another one we would like to overcome that one and then we require a bridge and it can be in multiple level also in cities you may found you have found maybe that there are so many levels of flyovers moving one after the above. Just to give you a in a interesting way this is the one they call it natural bridge in Andaman and which was never in use. You can see this one I can say this is the one we can use the passage and other one also we can use it here though it was never used but this one definitely is a very good tourist spot in Andaman just to give you a natural bridge that which they popularly call it as actually Howrah bridge also. Now a bridge is a key element we can consider that one the bridge you can consider as a neck of the body that means if you consider the neck of the body that is very important because it is connecting with the head and the other parts of the body so bridge is also like that if you consider any transportation system they are the important part actually the bridge so one from one end to other end there you will find out so many bridges in when in every kilometer of road you may find that one small bridge small span of bridge that also you can find out here now it if you see this one here i would like to say bridge is a key element in a transport system for three reasons it likely controls the capacity it is the highest cost per kilometer that means if we consider the road any transportation system the road then obviously the road part whatever you are having that you would say construction cost generally you may come up something in the range of um, 2 crores per kilometer per lane originally when the was, it was started long back in 2000 it was almost you can say 1 crore rupees 1 crore Indian rupees 1 crore per kilometer per lane that means for a highway if we consider that one say 4 lane so that means to construct one four one kilometer road then you require 4 crores now it may come around say 8 crores that means 2 crores per kilometer it can come in that range the second one that is the highest cost. The third one, if the bridge fails, the system fails. It is like say neck, that one having problem. So your whole system will collapse. That is the one we can show. So that is why bridge is very, very important one in our transportation system. I would like to give, though it is not relevant, but I would like to show you few bridges here because the first I am going to give you an introduction and then I shall tell you why we have chosen only reinforced concrete road bridges. For first let me tell you this particular one here. This is the very very old bridge. So this is the one from Rameswaram that one with the mainland of our country India that is actually constructed. But why I have chosen that one that is also very interesting thing that I am going to tell you within a minute. Next one that Howrah bridge Kolkata 1943 
that is also um, you would say steel bridge actually that one you can consider that one. This portion actually you are having cantilever portion, this one suspended portion over this. So, that to other side also similar kind of thing is there. Then you are having sorry that Mahatma Gandhi Setu in Patna that you can we can see that is constructed in 1982 and the fourth one that Vidyasagar Setu Kolkata 1992. Now, the question is that why I have chosen this? There are so many bridges, very, very iconic bridges in the world, but why I have chosen? Because these bridges actually that one that you say 5 rupee stamp that one published by India Post in 2007 and where you are having Havara Bridge, Mahatma Gandhi Setu, Pamban Bridge and Vidyasagar Setu. So, that is why I thought it is good idea to show you that bridge because bridge engineering a very, very vast area not only from the design point of view, also from the construction point of view and the last one and most, import, most important one that is actually your maintenance that bridge monitoring that is also equally very, very important. You will find out uh, few actually your say that disaster on the bridge failure, the famous um, one the bridge failure which happened in 1940 in Tacoma narrow bridge that cable supported bridge Tacoma narrow bridge that one which will fail within 6 months. So, there are many more such things are there I am not going to detail of all those things we shall come back to your um, mainly our reinforced concrete bridges, but I think it is worth to give the first introduction as a bridge engineering course I can say it is important to show this one. Now, the next thing is that the bridge controls both the volume and weight of the traffic carried. So, volume and weight these are important here. Now, now the thing is that how do you select the capacity? How do you select the capacity of a road? That is very, very interesting one. That means, how do I know that how many lanes we require? That is actually very, very important here. So, just to give you idea say for example, here you are having the road it is following moving like this. Then obviously, I have to consider the other one also. The question is coming here which will come in detail that what will be the width of the road. So, there are number of issues here, there are number of issues if you really consider this one, how do you decide that particular one here that volume of traffic and also equally important that weight that whatever we have told here. The if width of a bridge is insufficient to carry the number of lanes required to handle the traffic volume, the bridge will be a constriction to the traffic flow. So, that means, you will have um, that your say traffic jam in that particular area you will find out and it happens actually because of say improper planning it happens the um, roads are actually widened, but originally if the bridges are there with the narrow lane that you say with and then it you will always find out possibly you have also faced any time in any city anywhere it may happen that one that you may face that particular problem that there you are having that traffic jam it happens like that. So, that is why bridge is very, very important in the future planning also. If the strength of a bridge is deficient and unable to carry heavy trucks, load limits will be posted and track, uh, track traffic will be rerouted. So, this is the one also very, very equally important actually here that not only you have to consider the volume which will make you a jam in the road. And the second one that if the weight that heavy vehicles other things if you consider that one and there you will find out that uh, your that it will become actually deficient. So, you have to reduce the load. So, that you was a heavy traffic that heavy that highly heavily loaded trucks that one should be actually rerouted that it happens in that particular fashion. Bridges are obviously considering the road bridges are obviously expensive that is the part and we deal it separately. Whenever we consider the road construction, so bridges separate and road parts separate, 
whether it is actually concrete one or bituminous one, whatever we consider that what curve one is a pavement. So, bridge part we take it separate one. That means, if we consider that one though it comes under the same under same civil engineering, you will find out the bridge that part will be taken care of by the structural engineering group and whereas, pavement part will be taken care of by the transportation engineering group. It happens like that. The typical cost per kilometer of a bridge is many times that of the approach roads. This is one important part that you will find out. This is a major investment and must be carefully planned for best use of the limited funds available for a transport system. So, that means, this is the one actually major investment considering the road. So, wherever you can consider here that for roads we estimate in kilometers whereas, in bridges you have to consider in meters. So, you can imagine that the cost part that you can find out here. Now, this is very very important here. If the bridge fails, the system fails. The road you can consider the road as the lifeline, road or transportation system in for a country or for a civilization, you can consider this one as a lifeline to our system, lifeline of our civilization. You can consider that one here say for example, major ports, that major sea ports or whatever available there, from there you are always having the supply line. So, now whenever you are considering the supply line there <coughs> from the, so now the if any problem there sometimes it happens because of certain accident other things it happens the roads is blocked for some time and if it happens that road is blocked for some time then you will find out the traffic actually accumulated and to disperse the traffic it takes lot of time and it happens many times it happens like that. So, that is why bridge is very very important if it happens because it is very very small part of the system but it creates lot of problem if there is any problem there. So, that is why you have to be very very careful in our um, bridges. So, when a bridge is removed from service and not replaced the transfer system may be restricted in its function. So, this is a very very important part. So, that means, if the bridge is removed for, for some time actually that but core one um, uh, blocked then it happens. Traffic may be detoured over routes not designed to handle the increase in volume. Possibly, you may also have faced that kind of problem in your um, life that we are going that you say shortest route, but sometimes it happens whenever we are moving from shortest route, sometimes if there is any disruption whatever the problem there are many things happens actually. And because of that what happens actually you have to go through another route. Now, whenever you are going to another route everybody is trying to use that route and what will happen then that route there it will the volume will be more again that route will be not be sufficient to carry that particular one say that volume. There is one very important part here. Users of the system experience increased travel times and fuel exp expenses. So, obviously, that you will find out that you would say that travel times also will be increased and in that way your time also will be spent more and then also you will find out that fuel also that one also will come into here. Normalcy does not return until the bridge is repaired or replaced. So, this is very very important here that how much time you will give it. It happens sometimes in the bridge that happens say there is one car or vehicle or truck that one happens say for example, that is actually due to whatever reason that one may be due to accident or whatever reason actually it is just simply standing there. And if it happens there then you will find out the traffic either the traffic actually you are detouring or they are waiting and it creates lot of problem there. So, as I have told you here a bridge is a key element in a transportation system. Balance must be achieved between handling future traffic volume and loads and the cost of a heavier and wider bridge structure. Strength is always a foremost consideration, but should measures to prevent deterioration. Designer of bridges has control over these parameters and must 
make wise decisions so that capacity and cost are in balance and safety is compromised. So, first of all as I have told you in the very beginning of this lecture I have told you that particular one that it should be you should consider bridge in future planning. It happens particularly for example, say your say um, village roads or your say state highway they are because of say your say fund availability it happens that one originally possibly if you go to any remote villages you will find out that whenever in the beginning when the roads are constructed bus roads that for your say traffic that one constructed that time they have taken a single lane ok. I shall come back to that single lane, double lane, triple lane. Lane means that particular lane is used for your that vehicle. So, that is your one lane that one lane means that whenever you are moving that one that as I have shown here in this particular figure I am showing this particular figure here that here I mean to say that there should be uninterrupted flow. Now, let us consider this is the road here I am telling at a time only one vehicle can move. So, that means the from other side it, it comes then you have to wait somewhere you have to give pass so that it can pass and then you can move. Possibly you have experience that where originally it is worth to show that when you are having say rail line or rail track that one actually first introduced most of the cases you will find out during first whenever introduced in a particular locality in area you will find out that rail line actually given only in one place that means only one rail line there just to give you idea to show that how the rail line looks like these are the called sleepers this is the general symbol generally we use it. Now, whenever you are using rail lines then the you have possibly you I do not know whether you have any such experience that train can move either in this direction or in this direction because only one track we have. So, the train has to wait somewhere in the station train has to wait then only it can go because in stations you will find out that there are only 2, 3 tracks are available there this is the one. Similarly, this is called the lane width So, that we have to decide that means, if I want uninterrupted so I should have sufficient space so that vehicles can move in either direction from left to right as well as from the right to left. So, what happens in during uh, early stage or planning generally the roads if it is made say um, only for one vehicle then it will face problem when the roads are widened, but because of that we would say time and also fun the bridges are not widened because it is not uh, so easy to widen that bridge if you do not have any provision in future planning. So, that is why you will always most of the cases you will find out that vehicles are going and then you have to wait and you have to be careful whenever you are passing that bridge this is your very very important. So, this is that is why one very good thing in planning that roads you make it smaller width or single lane or double lane, but your bridges you make it at least double length so that two vehicles can move or you can keep it for three also that means say three vehicles can move like that. Strength obviously is a very important aspect that you can find out and then obviously that these parameters that we are considered that one says safety that one should be also considered here. Now, coming to this particular one here I would like to tell you the thing is that this particular course that we are having here that only reinforced concrete road bridges that one we have taken a very very small part or small segment of bridge engineering. So, that is why it is worth or it is wise to tell you that what actually that complete bridge engineering means. So, I can classify in many ways in the next lecture I shall tell you that classification also. So, for learning purpose it will be appropriate to classify as we are having in bridges superstructures and we call it substructures. So, superstructures whatever you can see that is called superstructures here. So, obviously, the reinforced concrete bridges 
then pre-stressed concrete bridges here the road part I have removed why because it can be for rail also it can be for road also and it can be for pedestrian also so that is why I have given here in general that reinforced concrete bridges pre-stressed concrete bridges steel bridges steel concrete composite bridges cable supported bridges that means a cable supported means that your suspension bridges and your cable state bridges. Now, this is called superstructure. Now, whatever load this particular one carrying say vehicles, pedestrian, rails, whatever it is all those things are carrying it has to be finally transferred to the ground. You have to transfer the load to be transferred to the ground that is the basic philosophy of design that finally, you have to transfer the load on the ground that is the one. So, we require something that called super substructures or foundation. Now, here you can see that I have shown you that particular one here that bearings. If you see this one I have shown you that bearings and then I am having substructures and finally, foundations I am considering that. We can consider substructure foundations all together also we can consider that particular one here, but bearings means that bearings will be above the substructure where the load will come and that load will be finally, transferred to the substructure and it will go to the foundation that one we can consider that one here. So, this is the one we can consider here or as you can see the bridge engineering such a vast subject here I have considered only from construction point of view only from design point of view the other part obviously you can consider that is actually your called inspection and monitoring and inspection because that yours that bridge that whether it is that health is good or not that also you have to check. So, coming to this particular one here only you can consider that one reinforced concrete bridges only this part only we are considering because we are given say your say 10 hours. So, we have to cover. So, that means you can consider this particular course if you consider in a one semester course it is very difficult. So, that is why we can consider that one is say 40 lectures if we consider. So, reinforced concrete bridges can come one then pistress concrete bridges say another 10 steel bridges it will come another 10 that particular one lectures 10 means I mean to say 10 of one hour each steel concrete composite which is that is very very important actually here and in coming days you may find out this particular will come cable supported bridges that is your another separate topic and obviously bearing substructure foundations all those. So, that means you can consider this one uh, I can say it if it is not say one year it can be actually your that course to understand fully at least one and a half semester course you can consider that means I can consider this one as I say Mm, approximately say 60 hours actually you can consider that lecture whatever we can consider. So, this is the one. So, out of that we have taken this one, but because we feel this is most general and most commonly actually constructed and if we understand this particular one we will shall understand the other part also very easily that where we have to address where we have to focus that we have to find out here. This is the one that we can consider that way we can consider here. Now, coming to this one here as I have told you here that we are considering mainly say your say road bridges that we are considering. So, obviously, you are having different kind of vehicles whenever you are having that road then you are having different kind of vehicles starting from your own car to your say public transport like say your buses or say load loading vehicle like say trucks other things those, those all those things you will find out. That means, you have to design that your say bridge so that the bridge can take care that that particular loads and then obviously, you have to find out what load we shall consider here. So, that is very very important here that particular one here. Just I have given you this particular few photographs I have taken from the internet that I have taken. So, just to give you one the truck then this is another kind of truck, then this was your one kind of vehicle, this is another kind of uh, vehicle you are having and there this one is a buses other things. There are so many others actually heavily loaded trucks for mainly for construction that all also being used in that particular case you can consider here. 
coming to this one here if you see if you see that particular bridge this one we see from the top and this is called the deck. So, you can find out this one I have given you a different color to distinguish that one. So, the bridge deck the load bearing floor of a bridge which carries and spreads the loads to the main beams it is either of reinforced concrete, pristess concrete, oiled steel like that this is called that bridge deck that you can find out. So, we can consider here what are the different parts this is very very interesting here this part we are considering that one for the vehicles this part we are considering for the for pedestrian that pavement part that we are considering this part we can consider we call it actually crash barrier or we can consider railing also that we also we consider here. Now, if we like to distinguish that was a cars at no time or really due to accident or whatever it is it should never come here. So, we should have certain kind of block there also that also we can consider here. So, this is the one in that particular one you can see. Now, obviously that you can see that I as I have shown you here this is the slab portion we can consider here there is certain thickness and obviously the question comes here if we consider this part the length or span that one if we increase it then automatically this portion to be increased. So, obviously, I cannot be here always that increasing the span and increase the depth of the slab that is not worth that is not a good idea that way we can consider here. So, this is the one that basic thing that we would like to do it here and our objective here to design this one and then we shall go to up to certain span where we require that one say RCCT beam and that is our objective here. So, coming to this one just like to I would like to summarize the whole thing here that is a very simple one bridge engineering in general I have discussed here just to give you idea what is the problems what thing we would like to do it that we have discussed and finally, that our present topic that you would say reinforced concrete road bridges that where the deck part and your RCC TV will come that we can consider that we it is uh, that I should show you certain say references. So, this is our reference that we have considered design of highway bridges and LRFD approach second edition Barker and Phuket John Willey 2007 there is another third edition also published by them and there are many more Indian books then I shall discuss that also whenever uh, we shall come to that we shall use that particular one, but this part mainly I have taken from this particular book that we have uh, considered here. So, with this um, I would like to say uh, that so just to come to that our main thing that is the main part that we shall consider and with this we shall complete uh, our thing and then we shall go to the next topic that is our say classification of bridges based on different criteria and that one with this I say thank you, thank you very much.